Shalom, shalom, shalom to the house of Israel and to all of you, my father's children. Um, I want to, I want to kind of finish this this thought that I started. <laughs> okay, I want to finish this thought. Um, again, it's a matter of salvation. Of course, it is. And what is your responsibility? responsibility in your redemption or in the redemption of the house of Israel alright so let's begin with this let's begin this particular message with this oh before I forget hit the like button just punch it and then subscribe if you haven't and share the videos please let the world know the truth and support the work we're putting in work for the work of the king I mean for the house of Israel for the kingdom of Yah and we are 100% full time depending on you to keep this work going so in advance thank you for uh, your support okay this again we're attacking the mindset of, of uh, you know I'm going to use what the world said that Jesus paid it all and you ain't got to do nothing but, for, but Jesus did everything and you ain't got to do nothing but confess with your mind and believe in your heart again two words that we don't even know what that means we don't know what confess means and we don't know what believe means those two words are Hebraic words they're not that those two words have a Hebraic meaning not an English meaning but a meaning to the people who wrote the Bible, which are the Hebrew, who know what the word confess means and know what the word believe means. All right? And we don't. So we take those words out of context and as a result have developed a false religion. And the, these Europeans for sure are pushing a false doctrine that you don't have to do nothing because and to them, white Jesus did it all. And then when we read the Bible, there's nowhere in the Bible where Hamashiach tells you, you don't have to do nothing. And there's nowhere in the Bible that Yah says, you don't have to do nothing, except believe. There's nowhere in the Bible. Now, we're, I'm, again, I'm using the English word believe because they don't know what the Hebrew word believe means. There's no such thing as belief in Hebrew that does not have action connected to it. Action is defined your your actions are what manifest or show forth your belief. So those two words, you know, even even uh, even James, whose real name is Yakub, Yakub, even he had to try to tell these people who have been scattered among these Gentiles, hey, don't stop following this Gentile mindset of talking about I got faith which is the same word as believe without works. Like, man, you, you're talking about you got faith and belief without works. Faith without works is dead. What are you talking about? So that whole thing, we know that the English have it wrong, and if you believe it, you're going to hell. So you don't want to do that. We want to be in the kingdom with him. All right. So, um, we are given instructions. So there are several instructions that have been given to the house of Israel between the ascension of our king, Hamashiach, in the book of Acts and the return of our king in the book of the Revelation. All right. So just chronologically, we have the ascension which took place uh, right after um, uh, Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks. And uh, they call it Pentecost. And then you have the return of Hamashiach, which most people believe is going to be around a Sukkot. And it may very well could be, but for sure, the picture of Sukkot is definitely the picture of our king returning to be with his people. So there is a gap 
between those two the ascension and the return and in the middle there is instructions given all right now i'm going to preach a sermon on this probably in the next month or two if y'all still have me breathing i'm going to preach a sermon on this i'm going to go deep into it but for now i just want to show you something When, uh, when the disciples were in the upper room during Shavuot, which is the Feast of Weeks, and you all know that's Pentecost, and the Bible says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, which is the actual word um, pente means fifty, and of course that's the day, that's the feast day. So you you uh, you count the Omer forty nine days, and the very next day you hold a feast. So that was that feast. So I keep mentioning that because people keep saying the feast days are done away with. You're going to hell for that too. Can't be done away with because they all have significance to us. Um, let me get back to my point. They were on one accord and they were then filled with the Ruach. I'll get into this later on. And they began to speak or to preach or declare in a bunch of different languages, the mighty works of Yah, the marvelous works of Yah. And the record is that they were heard clearly by people who either did not speak Hebrew at all, or Hebrew was their native tongue, and they had, or Hebrew was the tongue of their people, and uh, what they call their mother tongue, or they had uh, no idea of, of Hebrew at all, but yet they still heard the message. So after they heard that, you know, some mocked, but others was like, I don't know what's going on. So Kepha preaches. Yeah, I'm not gonna believe this is in the Bible, but it is. <laughs> So after he preaches, we'll get into this when I preach the sermon, but you can read it. It's in your Bible, Acts chapter, uh, chapter one, chapter two is where I'm at right now. So as he, when he gets to chapter two, as he's preaching, when he gets toward the end of his message, it says uh, that they were pricked in the heart. And the idea is that something he said, like a, like a, uh, like the point of a spear, like the point of a very sharp spear, hit him in the heart, and and they, when they, it all made sense, and so, and so. They said, what, men and brothers, what shall we do? <laughs> hey. What shall we do? Because they understood the message of Kepha was a message of deliverance. So what did he say? He said, save yourself. Save yourself. Save yourself. Save yourself. <laughs> From what? This untoward generation this perverse generation save yourself from this crazy world from this sick and perverted place how do I do that so you see the picture you gotta participate You can't be a part of the generation 
and being saved in a generation. You're in the world, but you can't be of the world, which means then works matter. He's saying you got to come out of that nasty, sick, perverted world that you're in and do what? You got to return to the covenant. You have to come back to keeping the laws and the statutes and the commandments. You have to repent, every one of you, in the name of Hamashiach, and not literally Hamashiach Yahushua, is literally the fulfillment of all the prophets. I don't have time today because this is not the message, but I'm going to prove that everything that was in, everything about Hamashiach was the reestablishment of that covenant. I'm telling you. And it's our fault that we don't know what's in the covenant. But one of the things about the covenant was it would save us. I'm talking about deliver now. It would deliver us from the destruction that was coming upon the world. So again, we see that the idea of salvation in the minds of Israel was the salvation from the destruction of the world. And who is going to destroy the world? Will it be the devil? Oh yes, we looked at it, didn't we? We going right back to the time of Noah, right? Same thing I said, it, the judgment that's coming on the world is not from the devil. When they said, men and brother, what shall we do? He was like, you better repent. In other words, you better turn back to Yah and understand what happened in the name or the, under the authority of Hamashiach, our king, and be baptized, every one of you. You better do it. Which literally, because the whole baptism thing is a return to the covenant. A lot of people don't even know what baptism is now. They just get baptized when they say, oh, man, I, I got saved. I need to get baptized. I don't even know what that means. That has to do with symbolically being placed into the company. Ooh, That's what it really is. I mean, you understand what Paul was talking about. And he says, you don't know that when he died, you died with him. When you were buried, you were buried with him in baptism. And when he rose again, the same the same Ruach that was in him that raised him from the dead now dwells in you. So now the Ruach of Hamashiach is the Ruach that's in you. The breath of Hamashiach is now the breath that's in you. Yeah. So now, what did he do with his breath, with his life? He kept the commandments of Yah. So what are you supposed to do now that you have his breath and his life? Keep the commandments. Is it a matter of salvation? You better believe it is. You better believe it. So our um, our forefathers, after the resurrection, between the resurrection and the return. They all gave their life. For. The covenant. They gave their life for their king. They gave their life for the kingdom. They gave their life. To preach this truth. Watch. And they gave their life. Participating. Participating. In the restoration of the house of the remnant of the house of Israel, they died, were killed, and they didn't do that just as no no. They like we didn't follow no cunningly devised fables. What are you talking about? We gave our lives. We're we're about to be all of us about to be killed for this, and you think we just made up something? No, what we are doing is we are participating in, in the salvation of the house of Israel. I already said in my previous video, now, there was part of this you couldn't do. He had to go a little further. Oh, don't do that more. Don't do that. He went further than you now. Don't, don't, don't say you could be the king. You can't be the king. But you and I have 
their responsibility. There ain't no getting around that. We have a responsibility toward the house of Israel that is as our small part in participating in the salvation of the house of Israel, which is the salvation or the deliverance from of the remnant that has been scattered worldwide. So that the remnant wakes up to the truth, begins to keep the law, statutes, and the commandments wherever they are scattered. And that's part of our work is to help them turn back to the covenant and, and back to our Elohim, to his laws, statutes, and his commandments. And also we are to turn to Hamashiach, watch this, and the testimony or really the covenant that he ratified through his blood, our king. So we turn our job now between the resurrection of Hamashiach and the, uh, um, I'm sorry, the ascension of Yahushua Hamashiach and the return, our part in the work of the kingdom is to get Israel scattered worldwide. To turn back to their king, their true king and the true kingdom. That's our work. That's our part in the deliverance of the house of Israel. And everybody has a part to play. Everybody has a part. And the idea that you can say, I'm not going to keep the commandments and still want to go into the kingdom, it's not going to work. And saying you're not going to do what he called you to do, it's not going to work. You're not going to do what he told you to do, but yet you want to hang out with him throughout all eternity. I, I don't understand who begin to teach that you don't have to do nothing. No, you have to do everything. You have to give your whole life. You got to reach the finish line of this life exhausted for the work of the kingdom. You, you, you have to give it all. That's what we have to start teaching our people. That's what we have to wake, how we need to wake up Jacob. You, this is, this is not no... No, uh -uh. no, it ain't about no tiddlywinks now. We ain't, we ain't talking about that. We're talking about giving our all. And I, I'll say this on the way out, and I made good time on this last video. We go as far as we can go. We do the commandments like he told us. We know what our task is because to every one of us that have been given, the Ruach have also been given gifts according to the Ruach. And so we also know what we're supposed to be doing. Even those who are supporting this work, you know who you are. Those who are working in the work, you know what you're supposed to be doing. Those of you who are supporting the work of the kingdom, all of you know. I can't tell you what that work is, but you know what that work is. And I'm telling you this, you better do it. <laughs> Talking about does it matter? It matters. It matters that you be faithful and that you work out your soul's salvation and that you stay faithful. It matters that your light shine. It matters that you're the salt of the earth. It matters that you work while it's day because night is coming. It matters that you share the information. It matters. Everything matters. Especially now. It all matters. How you live. How you worship. How you give. How you talk. How you interact with others. All that matters. And uh, Okay, I'll share this. Mari, are you talking about now sinless perfection? Of course not. If that was the case, nobody would make it into the kingdom. You do know Hamashiach said that in the last days, he's going to say, you've been faithful over a few things. <laughs> Come on up here. I'll make you rule over many. Why do you say that? Because nobody's perfect, sinless, perfect. He knows that. 
in the in the English we have a word perfect, but in in Hebrew really the word perfection means mature, or the act of maturity, or, or, or I'm sorry, or the process of maturity. So what he's really saying to all of us is, you did the best you could. When you saw all this, you responded. That means when you worked. When you saw this, you responded. When you did this, you responded. And each of those points out points to work. And therefore, according to the words of our king, there will be a great division. Those who did for the kingdom, he said, and did for the, the least of those in the kingdom, he said, I like doing it to me personally. <laughs> so, you participated in the salvation of the house of Israel. Now, you didn't, now remember, you, I gotta keep saying this because I don't want this to be misunderstood. You did not participate with your, with your blood to ratify the covenant and to die for the sins of Israel. No. Hamashiach did that. But you have a responsibility to now give your life for your brethren. To lay down your life. To give all that you have. That's your responsibility. So yeah, it matters. Everything matters. It's a matter of salvation. And it won't be long. Our king is coming back to do what? To deliver us from this untoward generation. Woo! This perverted generation, and I can't wait. Even so, now come Hamashiach. Come, King Yahushua Hamashiach. This untoward generation. Woo! It's a messed up generation. It's perverted. We want deliverance from this untoward generation and deliverance into our inheritance. Which not only did you promise, but that you are personally overseeing to give to us when you return. Hallelujah. 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 Let us, I am, let us be about our Father's business. Because serving Yah, it will pay off. After a while, stay true, stay strong. Support this work. We we'll support you. Pray for us. Pray for you. And uh, one love always. Shalom.